welcome to the deep dive. We're here to unpack the big ideas, the breakthroughs, really get into the essential insights you need fast. Today, we're looking at something pretty remarkable in science, a real potential game changer for tackling HIV. Just imagine uh, a single shot given once that could protect the most vulnerable people for years, maybe even their whole lives. It sounds like science fiction, but it's the promise coming out of some really fascinating new research. We're digging into a key study highlighted recently, and our mission, well, it's to break down what they found, understand the science behind it, and explore what it could mean for global health, especially for communities really on the front lines. Okay, let's dive in. Yeah, and it's crucial to understand the context here, the sheer scale of the problem this research is trying to address. It's, it's quite staggering. We're talking about a global crisis hitting kids the hardest. Get this, nearly 300 children get infected with HIV every single day. 300 a day. That's hard to even comprehend. It really is. And most of that, the vast majority, happens from mother to child during pregnancy, birth, or very often through breastfeeding. Now, we have treatments, antiretroviral therapies, IRTs, and they've been lifesavers, no question. But um, they come with real challenges, you know, making sure people take them every day consistently, getting the drugs where they need to go, access to care, especially in places with fewer resources. Think Sub-Saharan Africa. That region accounts for almost 90% of pediatric HIV cases. The need for something simpler, something more uh, robust is just immense. Right, which brings us squarely to this study and this, well, this breakthrough idea, a single gene therapy injection. It really does feel like a different way of thinking. A one-time treatment offering potentially years of protection. It's not just tweaking existing methods. It's uh, rethinking prevention entirely, isn't it? The lead researcher on this is Associate Professor Amir Ardashir at Tulane's Primate Research Center, working with folks over at the California National Primate Research Center, too. Exactly. And connecting it to the bigger picture, it's a huge conceptual shift. We're basically uh, hijacking the body's own cells, muscle cells in this case, and turning them into tiny factories. Factories, okay. Yeah, micro factories, constantly pumping out these protective antibodies. The way it works is, well, it's quite clever. They use something called an adeno-associated virus, an AAV. Now, you might hear viruses and worry, but these AAVs are harmless. They're like tiny, very efficient delivery trucks. Okay, safe delivery trucks. Right. They're engineered to carry genetic instructions into muscle cells. Once inside, those instructions tell the muscle cells to start producing something specific. In this case, they produce broadly neutralizing antibodies, or BNAVs. BNAVs, right. I've heard of those. They're powerful, aren't they? Yeah, extremely powerful. Unlike regular antibodies that might only hit one specific type of HIV, these BNAVs can uh, neutralize lots of different HIV strains. Now, scientists knew BNAB's work, previous studies showed that, but you needed repeated infusions intravenously. Expensive, time-consuming, just not practical for widespread use, especially in low-resource settings. Yeah, absolutely not scalable. Exactly. So this new method completely gets around that. The body becomes its own BNAB source, running 200-4-7. That idea, the body is its own drug factory, that's really something. But you said earlier, the timing is key here. The study found it worked incredibly well protecting for at least three years in these non-human primates, but it had to be given really early, within the first month of life. That points to this critical window. So what's special about being a newborn? Why does it work then, but maybe not later? That's, yeah, that's a million dollar question. And it comes down to the developing immune system. It's fascinating, really. Early infancy is this natural period of uh, what's called immune tolerance. Think of it like the immune system is still learning the ropes. Learning what's me and what's not me. Precisely. It's figuring out what belongs and what's foreign. And during the short window, it's much more accepting of new things, like the genetic instructions delivered by the AAV. It doesn't mount such a strong defensive reaction. It kind of... Uh, accepts the therapy as part of itself. And the study showed this really clearly. The primates treated within those first four weeks. They had strong, lasting BNAB levels and were fully protected when exposed to the virus later on. Wow. And these exposures simulated real-world risks. Yes, carefully designed to mimic things like transmission through breastfeeding or sexual contact. The protection held up. But compare that to the animals treated just a bit later, say at 8 to 12 weeks old. What happened then? Well, their immune systems, being more mature, recognize the gene therapy vector, or maybe the antibodies themselves, as foreign. Ah, uh, so they attack the treatment. Essentially, yes. They developed antibodies against the therapy, shutting it down. So the protection just wasn't there. 
It really highlights that neonatal immune systems are uniquely suited not just to tolerate the therapy, but to allow it to keep working long term. There was also an interesting finding about exposure in utero potentially helping prime the system. But as you said, for practical use, that single shot right after birth makes the most sense. Right. Dr. Ardashir put it perfectly, I think he said, as long as the treatment is delivered close to birth, the baby's immune system will accept it and believe it's part of itself. That quote really captures it. It's leveraging the body's own natural state. Mm. And that one and done nature, it just feels so right for the settings we're talking about. Low resource environments. You mentioned sub-Saharan Africa. Often the main time a mother with HIV might reliably see a health worker is right around childbirth. So that window, while narrow, is also maybe the most practical point for an intervention like this. It could genuinely change things, couldn't it? It really could. When you think about the daily struggle, the logistical nightmare sometimes of art adherence, a one-time prevention is... Oh, it's transformative. It moves beyond just being easier to something fundamentally different. But okay, even with a single shot, getting it to every baby who needs it in that first month, mm -hmm. that still sounds like a challenge. Oh, absolutely. It's not like flipping a switch. Implementation is always complex. You need good maternal screening, access to facilities for birth, reliable tracking to make sure the shot happens in time, especially in remote areas. Right. The infrastructure needs to be there. It does. But um, many places do have existing maternal and child health programs, even if they're stretched thin, this could potentially integrate into those. Mm -hmm. And compared to managing lifelong daily medication for potentially millions, the logistics, while challenging, seem much more manageable. The potential payoff is just enormous. Dr. Ardashir captured that excitement. You know, He said, nothing like this was possible to achieve even 10 years ago. Now we have all the ingredients to take on HIV. That's pretty powerful. Yeah, it gives you a sense of the pace of change. And he even looked beyond HIV, thinking this microfactory idea could work for other diseases hitting kids hard in similar regions. Malaria was one he mentioned. Imagine. Wow. Okay, that broadens the scope significantly. It does. But, and this is important, we need to be realistic about the next steps. This brings up the big question. How do we get from promising results in primates to something safe and effective for human babies. Right, the translation hurdle, that's always key. Always, we know there can be differences between species. How human infants immune systems react to AAVs might not be exactly the same. Will the antibody production last as long? Could there be unexpected side effects? These are things we absolutely have to investigate very, very carefully. Uh, what about the virus itself? Yeah. HIV changes, right, yeah. it mutates. Exactly. That's another critical point. This study used one specific strain of SHIV, the monkey equivalent. Real-world HIV is incredibly diverse. There are many different strains circulating globally, so for this to be truly effective worldwide, it needs to work against a wide range of those strains. That's a major next step for the research, proving broad protection. Okay, so significant challenges remain, but the potential is undeniable. Absolutely. These aren't reasons to stop, but there are reasons to proceed cautiously with rigorous testing and phased clinical trials. So let's try and sum this up. What does this deep dive tell us? We're looking at this incredible promise, really, of a single injection given very early in life, potentially offering long-term, maybe even lifelong, protection against HIV for infants born at risk. And the way it works is just ingenious, turning the baby's own muscle cells into these little antibody factories. It feels like such a leap from managing a disease day to day to potentially preventing it with one foundational intervention. It really is a profound shift in thinking. And you see this delicate balance, right? The, uh, the sheer excitement of the science, this amazing possibility balanced against the careful, ethical, step-by-step -step work needed to see if it can truly work safely in humans. But if it does, I mean, the impact on kids' health in the world's most vulnerable places could be just immense. It really makes you think differently about prevention. Absolutely. And it leaves us with a big question to ponder as we finish up. How might this kind of approach, moving away from constant treatments towards these one-and-done solutions that work with the body's own systems, how might that reshape the fight against other infectious diseases down the line, especially for those who bear the heaviest burden? It's definitely something to think about. And, you know, as the research continues, staying informed about your own health remains crucial. Knowing your status is key. Resources like the HIV RNA Test Guide offer quick, confidential testing with thousands of locations. It's affordable, fast results. Taking that step for your own health is always number one. Something definitely worth considering.